Welcome to the Southern Six Sports Podcast, brought to you by 228sports.com. Now, let's get in the game with your host, Bruce Thornton. And welcome to the Southern Six Sports Podcast, brought to you by 228 Sports, episode five of season three, week one of the high school football season is in the books, and we are going to be talking high school football tonight. Our guests include Coach James Ray of the George County Rebels, who head into a big rivalry game this Friday night with the Greene County Wildcats, and Coach Ty Smith of the St. Martin Yellow Jackets, who ended a 17-game winning streak, excuse me, a 17-game losing streak last Friday night with a big win over Van Cleve. And tonight, my co-host is a guy I get to work a lot with covering George County football and all athletics, Justin Estes. We are downtown Main Street at the Downtowner Grill here. And uh, Justin, good to have you with me. Yeah, good to finally get on the 228 uh, Sports Podcast here. Me and you've had plenty of uh, opportunities to work together at WRBE and covering uh, George County Athletics, but now we get to broaden the horizon just a little bit here and cover the coastal six counties. That's it, and uh, Justin and I, as he mentioned, uh, we've been covering George County sports. Uh, Justin had the uh, opportunity to uh, broadcast the uh, state championship game uh, last spring for the George County Rebel baseball team as I was uh, – in Missouri with my, my son uh, and the uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, golf team winning a national championship. But uh, Justin and I have been doing this for, I don't know, about five years now, I guess, uh, as the uh, primary voices of the George County Rebels. Yeah, about five years together. Uh, but when you look at how long we've been working for WRBE and covering George County Athletics in some capacity, it goes back 10 plus years <laughs> no doubt and uh, we also have a uh, talking sports show on wednesdays as well as a friday football uh, football show at noon both those on wednesday and friday on uh, 106.9 fm so he and i get to do this a lot and uh, looking forward to having justin on for the next couple of weeks as we go through high school football and as i mentioned justin week one in the books um when you look back on it uh, a few surprises, uh, you know, uh, a few scores that were surprises, maybe not the results, uh, a few results surprising, and um, really none bigger, though, as far as uh, what I look at is uh, that win for St. Martin ending that 17-game losing streak as they beat Van Cleef. Yeah, and both of our guests on the show today is going to be very happy men. Uh, Coach Ray happy that they were able to get a good win against East Central. Felt like there's a little bit on the table there, but – but yeah, anytime you lose or anytime you end a 17 game losing streak, uh, that's something uh, to note. And especially when you can do it against a Van Cleef team that many people didn't think they were going to be one of the powerhouses on the coast, but still a, a formidable foe in uh, Van Cleef and, and what they were expected to do this season. Yeah. And when you look at it, uh, you know, just kind of going by different polls and things that we've seen, including uh, the Gulf Coast poll that Matt Stats does every week. You know, Picayune, the, the team at the top, uh, rightfully so. Uh, they lose a, a what looks really – I mean, they give up 60 to Brandon. You look at score 60-34, but you got to dive a little deeper into that, I think, because when you look at it, 21 points off of defense, special teams type thing. That was a one-possession game in the fourth quarter. Picayune's not going anywhere. Yeah, they're one of the perennial powerhouses on the coast, but – uh, when you just look at the box score and you see Brandon 60, Picayune 34, it's like, you know, does the other teams in Region 4, 6, say, have a shot this year? You look at George County, you look at Pascagoula teams that's uh, been a little bit below Picayune in the last few years with Picayune just continuing to rip off wins and continuing to go play for state championships and win state championships. And, you know, it's got some of the other teams in this region just kind of licking their chops and, and hoping that uh, this score holds up and the Maroon Tide's not as strong as they have been in the past years. Yeah, and when you talk about Pascagoula, uh, the rivalry game with Moss Point, a big win for, for the Panthers, 48 to nothing. Uh, you know, I think that's two programs that are there right now are just in two opposite directions when you talk about uh, Pascagoula and Moss Point, and you saw that in the game Friday night in the Battle of the Cats. Yeah, and, you know, we talked with Nick D'Angelo on, on our show on Wednesday, and uh, he's Moss Point grad there, and he said they only dressed 27 players. Uh, and so when you talk about playing 11 on both sides of the ball, that's 22 starters, and when you only have 27, uh, depth really comes into play there. And I, I think that game was a little bit closer at the half, but Pascagoula – you know, they're looking to compete in Region uh, 4-6A. They're looking to be a playoff team this year. 
and uh, really ran away with it at the end of that thing and, and put up 48 points and got the shutout on defense. And if you look at it, and Moss Point is only dressing out, you know, 30 or less players, and that, that may be a, a, a trend you see with Moss Point. Hey, tough first half, play well, but just, yeah, you're going to run out of gas in the second half of these games, particularly early in the season in August and September when the heat is such a factor. Yeah, and that was one of the points I was going to make. When you look at these early season games, you know, you always talk about penalties, but you also always talk about cramps and conditioning and being ready for that. And when you have limited depth, then those things really magnify and come into play uh, deep into that ball game in the third and fourth quarter and to see if you just have enough left in the tank when you just don't have enough bodies to throw at it. That's it. You know, and uh, when you look at other games from around the area, uh, last uh, Friday night you had the Port City Classic in Gulfport. First game of the doubleheader. Uh, exciting. Gaucher holds off Harrison Central 26-23 in overtime. Second game, not so much. Gulfport rolls over Greenville Christian 41-6. to um, and, and I've kind of, you know, when I talked to Jeremy Forehand last year, Harrison Central is that one of those unknown teams in 7A that you think is going to be maybe a notch right below Gulfport and Ocean Springs. Uh, and to get a win, uh, you know, or to, to battle Gaucher like that kind of leads me to believe, yeah, that's the case. I mean, I think they're going to make a run at two of those, uh, uh, you know, two of those spots in the uh, seven, uh, Region 4 7A. Yeah, the Red Rebels is definitely one of those teams that you look at. that They're, they're not going to be an upper-tier team in that uh, coastal region of 7A, but they're always right around that 3-4 and going to be contending for a playoff spot, and I think this year that's going to hold true as well. Yeah, and then when you look at what Gauthier's doing, obviously their, their direction is pointed towards a region where they're going to have to deal with the Wayne County and with a Laurel Laurel handled this past weekend really uh, by Wes Jones and, and so uh, Wayne County is a team that you and I will put our eyes on here in a couple of weeks when we travel up there with the Rebels but uh, Gosha, I think they're they're going to be in that mix for, for one of those top two spots in, in that uh, in that region in 5A. Yeah I, I do too and you know we, we're going to be pretty familiar with a lot of those opponents playing a Wayne County East Central plays in that same region and so uh, we're going to be able to put our eyes on we've already put our eyes on one of those teams but going to get to see a couple of them but i definitely when you just look at that region as a whole uh Gaucher is right there in the mix with with the laurel and wayne county is usually predominantly good too is the teams that's going to battle it out for the top of that one yeah another team in 7a that we weren't really sure about that we you know were like okay they could be in that mix with harrison central de iberville and uh and uh Harris Central, Diabville, and, and this Biloxi right below, you know, battling for those two spots below Ocean Springs and Gulfport. And uh, the Coach Dubose era begins with a shutout as they uh, beat Stone 15 to nothing. And, again, another team that we're going to see in a couple of weeks with the Rebels, uh, we, get, we get to put our eyes on Biloxi. Yeah, and George County really owes Biloxi payback for that game last year as uh, it was all Indians down there in Biloxi. This time the return trip's up here in Loosedale, but – that's about where they started last year when you look at that Biloxi Stone game. And, that you know, that's what I'm kind of doing. I'm kind of looking at the scores from last year to this year and seeing how teams have progressed when you talk about have they made improvements. You look at uh, just some of, the, some of the games that just kind of jump off the paper in week one as being kind of questionable. But this one, it kind of holds true with this was about the score, the margin of victory for Biloxi last year. And I just think you're talking about a 7A school play in a 4A program. And, and they should be winning games like this. Yeah, and, you know, when you look at uh, Stone, uh, I think they'll they'll be in that mix in 5A, uh, you know, with with right below maybe in that four spot. I mean, when you look at that uh, region, I think you put Gaucher, you put, uh, you put Wayne County, you put Laurel there at the top, and then you got to put East Central Vankley. But, again, um, week two becomes such an interesting part of this because I look at that score and I'm like, okay, I want to see what Stone does this week. You know, another team I want to see what happens <laughs> is a team that we're playing this week, George County's playing, is in Green County, but I'm almost as interested to see what West Harrison does because it's not, I wasn't surprised that Green County beat West Harrison because Green County at home, very good team, and Green County's got a, a good team with some athletes. But they were in control of that game, I think, 35 to nothing and just really cruised to that 42 to 13 win. Yeah, and that's one of the games I really look at last year to this year. Last year, Green County lost that one 41 to 40, and West Harrison returned a lot of players from last year's team. So are the Wildcats really that improved with ripping off a 42 to 12 win? That's as impressive of a win from week one as I've seen. 
And, you know, Green County is one of those teams that got hot late in the year last year. They finished with a record of four and seven, but won a couple of games there in the playoffs. Uh, I, I believe it was, was a win against Poplarville to get into the playoffs yeah. and won their first round matchup before they lost to a team in South Mississippi that ended up playing for the state title in Columbia. Yeah, and when you look at it, another team that went on the road that was impressive was uh, the Iberville. I thought they did a, you know, again, you go on the road to Columbia and, and the Iberville's trying to build back in, in 7A and uh, they go put 50 on, on, the, uh, on Columbia up there and uh, handle them. Yeah, that was one of the ones when I'm looking at the 2-2 sports uh, scoreboard that really stuck out to me because Columbia, you know, they're a, they're a smaller school. They play in 4A. But they're a powerhouse. Right. They went 14-1 and one last year and played for a state title. They won the state title in 2021. Uh, for the past three, four years, they've been a really good program. They beat D'Iverville last year 40-17. to 17. And then to do the complete 180 and to beat the Wildcats 51-15, to 15, that says a lot about D'Iverville and the way they're trending for this season. Yeah. And uh, just looking at other scores from last week, another uh, game that kind of jumped out at me uh, was Long Beach picking up a win. I mean, uh, you know, when you look at uh, what they did last year and in their long losing streak and to come out of the gate and pick up a win in week one, uh, that just that's a team that the more success they have early could prove the confidence that they would have moving down, you know, in, once they get into region play. Yeah, because the region play is definitely going to be tough for the Bearcats. But if they can string together a couple in, in the non-district schedule, then they can be playing with a lot more confidence. And that's one of the teams that George County plays early in the uh, region competition there. So that's something to take note of. But, you know, that's another one that you look at the Jamboree from last week and what Green County was able to do to Long Beach in that one. I believe they put up 48 or 40-plus points in two quarters of play. So, uh, I, I think that just continues to build the case of uh, this is a really good Green County team coming in to Gilmartin Stadium this week. Yeah, and then you had Bay High avenging their loss to Resurrection last year, a 4A matchup against 1A school. And the Tigers handled uh, the Eagles 34-3. to And then uh, probably one of the, the bigger, the marquee matchups from around the state, you had Brandon and Picayune, but you also had Madison Central coming down to Ocean Springs and knocking off uh, the Greyhounds 27-20. to And uh, we've talked about this. Uh, I've... <laughs> Every show I talk about preseason football, I mean, 7A, that's the question mark. Can Region 4, kudos to Ocean Springs for going out and finding out early what they got to do, but can they down the road in November and December, can they beat these teams from the Jackson area? Yeah, that's always the question when you talk about uh, Region 4, 7A, but Ocean Springs playing Madison Central, which is a perennial power in 7A, and go ahead and and just finding out what you're made of, this one can pay dividends down the road as uh, that's going to help expose some things that Ocean Springs can work on and continue to get better at it as the season progresses. Yeah, and when you look at it and you start talking about this week's schedule, I mean, uh, they, they're going to do the same thing. Ocean Springs going to get on the road, travel to Oak Grove, and, uh, and that's a uh, Region 3 versus Region 4 matchup that is a, a definite potential playoff game. I think it's been a playoff game many times in the last couple of years. Yeah, I, I believe it was a playoff game last year. I, I know it was over the, one of the last two seasons. So, I mean, that just continues to show you Ocean Springs is building towards uh, getting back into the playoffs and, and making a little noise. You know, some years that they haven't been as battle tested as they have this year, jumping out there with the Jaguars and then following it up with the, uh, the Warriors of Oak Grove. So that's two good non-district games that will get them prepared for district play and potentially a playoff run. Yeah, and you also got a Region 3 versus Region 4 7A matchup with Meridian coming to Biloxi to take on the Indians, and that'll just be another a gauge of where the Biloxi Indians are uh, when you look at it before we see them in a couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, so who, who does Biloxi play this week? Uh, Meridian. Meridian, so yeah. I'm looking at the scoreboard, and it's got George Candy. I know, I'm like, <laughs> I know that's not right. I know who we're playing, but, but yeah, Meridian's another one of those teams uh, that, that'll be a good measuring stick for Biloxi. Uh, could be a potential uh, playoff matchup down the road. So uh, it's, it's good to go ahead and have, have some familiarity with some of these teams that you may see later on. Yeah, and when you look at it, uh, I guess the other matchup outside of ours, uh, George County, Green County, that I'm interested in, um, I think Gaucher Diaberville. I think that's an interesting matchup. Uh, 5A, 7A matchup there with, with the Gators 1-0, Diaberville 1-0 to see if those teams can build off of what they did last week. We've already talked about it with uh, D'Iberville picking up the big win on the road with Columbia and Har uh, Harrison Central losing to Gaucher. So uh, that's a matchup of two 1-0 teams, and, and that's really one, like I said, that, that kind of jumps out at me. They're like, okay, uh, that's going to be a competitive matchup. I think it's 
probably uh, one of the top ones uh, this Friday night. Yeah, I would agree. When you look at the games that match up, coastal teams, Gauthier was able to jump up classifications and beat a 7A uh, program in Harrison Central in week one. And then D'Iverville, like we mentioned, it was a really impressive win. And now you've got two teams that have impressed in week one that's going to battle it out in week two. So it, we'll really know more about these two programs and, and who's got the leg up as, as we go into week two here. Yeah, and uh, St. Martin uh, trying to improve, and we'll talk with uh, Coach Smith more about this, but they've got a, a trip to pedal and pedal. Quite a battle with Hattiesburg uh, last Saturday night. Yeah, that was a, a low-scoring ball game. The uh, Tigers beat the Panthers 7-3. to three. So that's one of note as, uh, you know, Hattiesburg's a team that's on the Rebel schedule later in the year. So it'll be interesting. Uh, St. Martin got that big win against Van Cleve, broke that long losing streak to, to go to pedal, and uh, that's always a tough place to go play. And that'll be a, a good battle, a good test for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, and then you look at some of the other games and you look at some of these other teams or – you know, Van Cleve coming off uh, that loss to St. Martin, uh, having to take on Gulfport, tough matchup for the Bulldogs. You look at East Central coming off the big loss to George County, going to Pascagoula, take on the Panthers. That's tough. Moss Point going to Hancock. So there are some 0-1 teams that, that aren't doing themselves any favor with uh, Week 2 scheduling either. Yeah, that uh, East Central schedule just continues to get even tougher, you know, going to Pascagoula and playing that one. That's another one of those games that close in proximity for the Hornets and uh, – It'll be another tough contest uh, for East Central as they uh, go down uh, 63 there and go play the uh, Panthers this week. Yeah, and then you've also got the uh, Battle of Highway 26 with uh, Stone and Poplarville, and Poplarville coming off an opening uh, season win, which is very rare for them because they usually open up with a really good team, whether it's Picayune or this time it was Jefferson Davis County. And uh, to get that win, uh, Poplarville looking like the class of uh, 4A, particularly uh, in that division. Yeah, and anytime you beat Jeff Davis County, if, if you don't know about Jeff Davis County, you should because that's old bass field and there's a lot of athletes in that area. Anytime you can pick up a win there, it's big. And, you know, the Hornets is one of those teams, even though they're a smaller classification team playing in 4A, they're high on a lot of people's radars as far as you talk about, uh, you know, coast teams and where they're ranked in some of these preseason polls. I believe uh, Matt Stats Coastal Football had them in the top five at number five. Uh, going into week one so that's a big win for him. I, I agree with that uh, we talked about that last week I think you could you you know he put um, you could put Picayune at the top I still think they probably deserve to we'll see how it plays out you know maybe slide them down to number two but I think there are six teams that you can kind of jumble up there at the top five and uh, you know um, Ocean Springs and Gulfport in 7a and then you put George County Pascagoula Picayune in, in 6a and then uh, maybe Gaucher, and then uh, I think Poplarville goes right there. Yeah, but that's just one that kind of jumped off the page. You know, you, you hear about the 7A schools, and you expect to see them at the top the, uh, of the uh, of the polls preseason, but to go ahead and give Poplarville a lot of respect early on, that says a lot about what the expectations are this year. Yeah, so a lot of rivalry games, none bigger than the uh, Battle for the Bell that we will be at the Gil Martin Stadium with. And uh, in the next segment, we're going to talk to Coach Ray about that. Uh, now, I will say Coach King had an invitation to be here. Uh, he couldn't make it JV game uh, tonight. And so uh, I'm not, I'm, I, I know we're homers. We, 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 we say that, and, and I say that on the uh, podcast as well. But uh, we did want a perspective from that. But Coach Ray is going to join us. And I'm actually kind of double dipping here because we're fixing to start the, uh, the, the coaches show here in George County that we do every Tuesday night on uh, WRBE. Now, we may be doing it inside after that flash of lightning. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and record a segment when we start talking about the, uh, the Green County game. So there'll be a little different sound to the conversation, maybe some uh, shameless plug for the downtown or grill, something along those lines. But we are on Main Street in Lustell uh, recording this. Uh, we are outside on the patio, but uh, we may have to move this thing inside. Yeah, it's, uh, it's <laughs> starting to get kind of scary around here, but uh, definitely there's going to be a disclaimer when we get to this segment that there will be a heavy George County bias. Well, I, I hate in the last segment, there will be a heavy St. Martin bias. That's what we're going to do. That's what I do with these. I try to get, get with these coaches coming off big wins or heading into big matchups, and I don't think there's any bigger matchup, uh, anything that is as big as Battle for the Bell uh, coming up this week. And, and uh, what St. Martin was able to do, man, hey, to get that monkey off their back, uh, I'm looking forward to talking to, uh, to Coach Smith uh, later, and I know he's really excited about what, what those kids have done. 
Yeah, you know, both of, both of those. Coach Ray's going to be a happy man. Uh, they're going to be happy down there in St. Martin that they were able to uh, break that long uh, losing streak. Anytime you can get off the skid, it's, it's a good thing. All right, so we'll be back with uh, Coach Ray, and Justin and I will be back here with more of the Southern Six Sports Podcast, brought to you by 228 Sports. We'll be back. Hey, all of you South Mississippi sports fans, are you ready for some high school prep sports this fall? Get in the game with the new 228 Sports app. Live scores, breaking news, players of the week, and so much more. Now available for iPhone and Android devices. Download the first dedicated high school sports app for South Mississippi today. Only from 228sports.com. Ready to score big with the best sports coverage on the Mississippi Gulf Coast? Then lock you radio on WPMO. We're like the cool uncle who knows a little too much about sports, the one who gives play-by-plays at every family barbecue. From local high school games to the SEC and even the Atlanta Braves, tune you radio into 1580 or WPMORadio.com. Dave Ramsey is also back weekdays from 2 till 4 p.m., and you'll find the local and national news every weekday morning. WPMO, the talk of South Mississippi. Welcome back to the Downtown or Grill Coach's Corner on a Tuesday night here in Main Street in Loosedale and also uh, 228 Sports, Southern Six Sports Podcast, as we are focusing uh, tonight on the battle for the bell, the Farm Bureau battle for the bell between George County and Greene County. Head coach of the George County Rebels, Coach Ray, joining us. And uh, Coach, a uh, big rivalry game coming up with uh, Greene County. Both teams coming in 1-0. and oh, And uh, when you look at the film, uh, uh, from or look at the scores from last week. Uh, are we are we expecting a shootout here uh, Friday night at Gil Martin Stadium, or is uh, these two defenses going to figure out how to slow down some really good offensive players? I don't know. I mean, that's the question of the week, I guess. <laughs> but I know it's two really good teams. It's going to be on the field Friday night, and you know it's going to come down to full quarters. It always does with Green County. It's all they ever. I run away from either side, and. You know, we're expecting that full quarter battle. And, I mean, it's not been hard to motivate our guys to get here. I mean, we, we practiced Monday, and nobody had had almost perfect attendance. I knew where the two were that didn't show up, and uh, they were sophomores, young guys. But, you know, I I think we, I, we're going to have a great atmosphere Friday night at Gil Martin, and it's going to be a great game. And when you look at it, Justin, uh, the overall uh, 35 uh, contest between George County and Greene County, now it can go back even farther when you talk about Loosedale and Leakesville. But uh, George County won 24 of the games. Greene County has won 11. And uh, last year's game up at Johnny Ainsworth Field, the Rebels uh, pull away late 41-28. And that's kind of been the, the – the, 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 even if the scores have been a little bit spread out, these have been close ball games the last couple of years. Yeah, they really have. Uh, anytime you play in a rivalry game, especially Georgia and Greene County, if you've ever uh, read the Us versus Them book, this is one of the best rivalries in the state of Mississippi. And, you know, if, if you're from North Mississippi or even maybe on the coast, you don't realize how good of a rivalry this is. Even though George County is a little higher classification team than Greene County, you've got a 6A versus a 4A team. But these two teams, they usually play very competitive ball games with one another. It's tight-knit communities two communities that are close in proximity. And anytime these two schools get on the field, I don't care if it's basket weaving or football, it's very competitive and it's always you want to win this ball game. Yeah, and Coach Ray, when you look at it, I think that's one of the unique things about this rivalry is that it's there's so many families, there's so much crossover there. There are coaches on that staff that played at George County and, and, and have ties to, back to the Rebels. and. You know, players with families and that uncles or, or that played on one side or the other or brothers or, or whatever. And I think that's what makes this one of the more unique ones is it, it's truly just a, a family rivalry uh, in a lot of cases. Oh, that's, that's what separates high school football from any other college rivalry or even professional rivalries is because of that aspect. I mean, we got our kids got relatives over there. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, they, they vice versa. And, you know, playing against each other, playing against their cousins, or I think we've had, got a brother on the other team. So, you know, that's that's what makes high school football so special. And when you talk about rivalries, we're very close to each other, and, and it's, it's, everybody knows everybody over there. 
Yeah, and uh, and when you look at uh, your team, George County, um, I know if you're listening from the coaches show, we've already talked about this, but we're going to kind of double up a little bit. Uh, really big win last week. Uh, Deuce Knight played really well. Offense, uh, limited number of snaps, but scored a lot of points. And uh, and, and your team coming in, uh, obviously uh, excited and confident after last week's win. As they should. I mean, East Central's not a bad team by any stretch, and, and they're going to be fine going down the stretch. And, and, and to, to win that game like we wanted and, and kind of go away and, and really never felt threatened in that game, although it was a close game, and, you know, score-wise at halftime, it just wasn't the pressure that we better hurry up and do something. It just kind of relaxed and let it play out. Uh, that, that should give a lot of confidence going in. And, and then, like I said, there's no motivation needed for this week. Right. right. So you kind of get those first two games under your belt and you feel good about yourself uh, because you played two really rivals back to back weeks that you know kids are amped and ready to go. Yeah, and and I think Justin, uh, sometimes that that's you know that can weigh on you a little bit, and maybe later on in the season if you had that schedule stacked up like that, first two weeks of the season, you can speak from experience on this as a former player, you're just happy to be playing anybody, and the fact that it's a rival just makes it that much more special. Yeah, really, it's the cherry on top. Anytime especially early in the season you finally don't have to beat up on each other in practice you get to hit somebody with a different color, color jersey and uh you know just this being the rivalry that it is and especially this year because when you look at this rivalry i don't remember the last time when both teams come off as impressive of a week one win as this season now there's been impressive wins on one side or the other but really both of these teams with green county uh, coming off a very impressive win over West Harrison and George County coming in with a very impressive win over East Central. Uh, this is a much anticipated matchup at Gilmartin Stadium this Friday night. Yeah, I mean, and when you look at it, Coach Ray, uh, both teams have played six quarters if you go back to the Jamborees and the offenses have put up over 60 points. You know, each, each team has scored. I mean, you guys put up but 50, well, right at 54, I guess 55. So in Green County, put up 40 and 40. So they're at 80, you know, in their, in their jamboree and stuff. But still, you know, I mean, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of athletes on the field. I mean, is that what you see when you look at the film of them? Do you see a similarity of, hey, there's there's plenty of field to cover, just like when they look at us? Oh, absolutely. And they, they're going to throw it all over the place. And uh, Cody King does a really good job of getting the ball in the right spots and the right times and getting rid of it quick. So, can we blitz him? Can we get pressure to him? Is he going to get rid of it quick enough? You know, those things are all question marks going into this. And, and yeah, they got a receiver that's as good as anybody in the state. And, and he's not the only one. They got two two other guys that are sure handed, run great routes. And, you know, we go from seeing nothing, 80 runs to 80 passes. And then 80 is exaggerating, but that's what it feels like. Right. And, you know, <clears throat> Our guys have got it. We had to refocus this week and, and change dynamics. And it ain't about the front seven. Now it's about the back four. Right. And, and can we get good in that area? Yeah. And when you look at it, Justin, you know, wide receivers, the Rebels with Bryn Moody, DJ McNair, uh, Montreal Dorch, uh, you know, uh, and Coach Ray talking about Chase Matthews, big wide receiver, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, something like that. I mean, he, he hurt us last year in the game, I remember. Uh, but uh, these two offenses very similar in, in spreading the ball out. And, uh, you know, like Coach Ray said, uh, completely different than what we saw last week uh, when we watched uh, George County and East Central. Yeah, Matthews was extremely impressive in the matchup a year ago, and I, I believe this Green County team is even better this season than they were from, from last year's. They really caught fire down the stretch. Uh, but, but, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun whenever you have athletes on both sides of the ball like we do. And I think just as – a team and as you know this season progresses to play uh, offense with the style of East Central and then turn around and play a completely different style it's just going to make us well balanced and and give us a lot of different opportunities to see a lot of different styles of offense and that's just going to make us better as the season progresses. No doubt and then Coach Ray obviously we've talked a lot about that is that one of the, the keys that, that you like about this early schedule of the different offenses that you see the first five or six weeks of the season getting you ready for the offenses you're going to see those last five weeks when you jump into region play. No, oh, absolutely. It's, it's, you, you try to mirror those schedules, those non-district to di district schedules. And, you know, last week we saw West Harrison. We saw uh, Picayune-style offense is going to run it a lot. Different, They do it differently, but they're going to run the ball. And, 
And this week, Pascagoula has, has got a, a really good quarterback and throw it around too. So we, Hattiesburg's going to have that, you know, receivers that are really fast and really good. And so it's a good balance. And, then it's, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd want it back-to-back -back weeks, the, the, the big contrast as it is. But it's still preparing us to get ready for our district play down the road. Yeah, so your defensive coaches just walked in uh, to the film room Saturday or Sunday or whatever and said, okay, uh, let's, let's just grade everybody out and just put this away for a while because we don't need to – we don't need the, there's nothing about the playbook that we put up last week that we're going to need this week. Right. <laughs> it's totally different. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and, I don't even think you could tell we was in a 3-4 defense last week. I mean, we had everybody up there. Yeah, and uh, you know, and and, to, and you know, and now it's all about, and and I like the the quarterback matchup uh, of King and Knight, Justin, two two very experienced guys. I mean, uh, you know, uh, that have really just seen everything. I don't, I don't really see Coach Coach Ray was talking about it uh, uh, during the break a while ago about how he how, how Deuce got us out of certain plays in the first half against East Central, uh, but but I just see these two quarterbacks. I don't think you can really fool either one of them. Yeah, and, you know, we mentioned Deuce's uh, stat line and how he uh, run for 72 yards and passed for 163. Well, if you look at Kobe King's uh, stat line, uh, the senior from Greene County, he rushed for 40 yards, passed for 185, a, a total offensive night of 225 last week against West Harrison. So, I mean, it is going to be a fun quarterback matchup, and this is one that we've seen for a, a couple of years now as both of these have started from being underclassmen, and now both of them are playing each other one last time for their senior season. Yeah, and, and so when you have that experience, Coach Ray, and you, you have a coach's son playing quarterback for Greene County, and, and that, I mean, is it one of those cases where you just – you're not going to fool him on a consistent basis, but maybe in that key moment you show him something just a little bit different or you bring a blitz just one extra time or something that, that, that maybe turns the tide in a game like this? Hopefully hopefully we got those one or two or three big moments that, that we can kind of shake it up and confuse him. You know, it's an experienced quarterback, it's hard to do. I mean, it's the same thing with Deuce. He's, he's seen about every secondary, every coverage, every blitz combination. Uh, you know, our, especially when we're going against us and, 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 and count, uh, Coach Causey will dial up a ton of blitzes and, and, and you know, try to try to get some work in against us. And, and so Deuce has seen it, and, and so has King on the other side. But, yeah, you hope in some big moments that you can change up, you can disguise here, you can show one side and bring the other. And, and get one in on him, you know. Those are going to be big moments for us. Yeah, and and Justin, to me, it just I, I just can't get people that are listening on the podcast two two eight that, that have not seen the Green County George County matchup. The athletes on the field, and then you magnify. They know each other. I mean, you're literally lining up across from a guy that you've known since you were ten years old or whatever. You played pee wee football against. You've played summer league baseball with. All of these things. And then you're talking about really good athletes on top of that. And then the fact of this is a rivalry game, I mean, it, it can be special. Yeah. And it's similar, you know, if you're not familiar with the George Green County matchup to Mississippi State Ole Miss. Maybe not to that level, but it's one of those things. I've got family in Green County. We go see them at Thanksgiving. We go see them at Christmas. And even though this game's being played in early September, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> We're going to talk about who won this ball game uh, at Thanksgiving, at Christmas. And it's the same thing with the Egg Bowl. You know, you're going to talk about your team got, a, got us this year or whatever. So it's one that you always want to win because you do have family on the other side. Or most of the people who are from here, grew up here, has family on the other side or know somebody from the other side. So it's one that you always want to win, even though it's not a district game. It's one that has a bunch of importance in the communities. Yeah, and I'm, I'm still waiting on the unofficial Ingalls line on the game. I know there, there'll be some discussion on them vans going down 63 uh, for the next couple of days uh, on that. But I, uh, I have no comment. <laughs> I stay out of all that. Well, it's all for fun. I know that. But uh, there, will, there will be some bragging rights, and uh, I will, I'm willing to bet there will be some wagering uh, uh, on the cup, line cup of uh, here, out, out of Chevron of and Ingalls. That's right, without a doubt. But uh, it, it is one of the special ones, and, and Farm Bureau adding the uh, trophy. And, uh, and Justin, it, it is special. I mean, these kids, they like that idea. They, they, the George County kids want to keep that bell in, in, in the field house there at George County at Gilmart Stadium. And Greene County would love to load it up 
on the bus and take it back to uh, Johnny Ainsworth Field. Yeah, and that's something that's really added an, a new element to uh, this rivalry in the past seven, eight years whenever we did get that Bale Trophy sponsored by Farm Bureau. So you've literally got something that you're playing for, and whoever wins it is going to be ringing it at, at the 50-yard line after the game, and you just hope that for our sake it's the George County Rebels. Yeah, and it's going to be a, you know, a really big matchup from that standpoint. And Coach Ray, from, from your, you guys' perspective, I mean, it, it is a – it's just a, a – it's a rivalry game with, with a, a lot of closeness. And, and you look back at the stats, I mean, the last uh, – the Rebels have won four out of the last five. And I remember the game uh, up at Greene County uh, late in the ball game, one score game, and they go for it on fourth down and, and, and King hits a pass uh, in the flat, I think, or a slot man that converts the first down. I mean, that's how the games have been two years ago. Uh, or the, the year before that up at Greene County, um, I think we, we hold them off late or something like that. And, and it's just uh, – it's, it's a rivalry and it's a lot of talk and it's a lot of friendly stuff. Uh, but uh, sometimes the community uh, – they almost put too much into it. I'm going to go ahead and say it like that because there's a lot of season left for both these teams. And I know we want to be 2-0 and and they want to be 2-0, and but there's bigger saying goes, bigger fish to fry down the road. And, and that is a perspective you have to kind of keep in mind with this. Uh, it's a big game. I know. We, we, I know. We, I know. We, 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 we're going out to try to win this game yeah, yeah, and, and worry about the rest of it <laughs> as it comes on. You know? yeah, but that's our motto anyway. We're uh, one no game doubt. at a time. You know, we're not looking down the road for anybody. We're looking right at what's in front of us. And th- we got a big one this week in front of us. I just, I just remember a hangover from, from a couple of years ago. And I'm like, you know, and that's tough. I mean, it's part of this rivalry that, you know, it's what people talk about. Because the next week, George County plays, play Blank, play, play Blux, you win those two games and you're, you know, and then you're still talking about the second game of the season. But, Justin, that, that's where this rivalry has gotten to. And, and you know, and I think for both teams, it, it's let's get to Friday night. And then the challenge for Coach King and Coach Ray is win or lose, let's enjoy it over the weekend. But then – we got to come back and get ready to go. Now you got bragging rights and you're happy and you want you're not going to forget it, but you got to get ready to move forward. Yeah, and that's what makes this one so fun. This is one of those weeks that, as a player, as a coach, you don't really have to motivate anybody to get ready for this one. As we would walk into the locker room as a player, I was fortunate to play on uh, three of these occasions from my sophomore year to my senior year, and this is one that you know you didn't really have to say a whole lot. Everybody knew what was at stake, and going up here and and winning that ball game was of the utmost importance and you know everybody just kind of walked with a little different swagger practice a little bit harder getting ready for friday night oh and that's the case now i mean we've had two really good days uh monday and and today and you know i expect tomorrow to have a really good day and if it's going to rain friday i hope it rains tomorrow and we can practice on it you know and get ready for that but uh, you know they're they're just exciting this type of rivalry and i've been at schools where that's rivalry is at the end of the year and that I'm really concerned at the end of the year, win or lose, going into the playoffs. You know sure. and how that affects you. You know, so being early kind of eases that a little bit, uh, but it's still the gravity of that game is still real, and, and it's our guys don't want to lose it, and and uh, we're gonna fight like crazy Friday night to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, coach, uh, in your best coach speak. <laughs> Give me a, a key to the game for for the Rebels. Uh, what, what do we try? What do we got to do offensively? Uh, what are you looking for? And then what do we got to do on the defensive side of the ball? Offen- Without giving away anything, your best yeah. coach speak. Yeah, yeah. Offensively, <laughs> we got to take care of the football. We can't turn it over. We can't put it on the ground. Can't play behind the scr- behind the chains like we did in two series, uh, uh, the first half against uh, East Central. So we got to do those things and, and continue to get better. Uh, up front, at, at running routes, running the football, making great decisions. I want to see improvement uh, from last week to this week. Uh, defensively, you know, we, we passed the test last week against the running team, so this week can we pass the test against the passing team and, and rally and make tackles and keep those guys in front of us and don't let them get behind us and, and those type of things and just go compete. Uh, so I want to see improvement. I want to see us go out there and play with a lot of effort, a lot of passion which they're going to do, yeah. uh, and, and then, you know, just take care of those simple things and worry about the scoreboard when the game's over. Yeah, and, and you know, they always say, and Coach Ray, you can speak to this as a football coach, uh, a football team shows its biggest improvements from 
week one to week two and, uh, you know, clean up the penalties and the mistakes and things like that. And that's what you hope for the Rebels uh, that they can do uh, from that standpoint. But, it, man, if you, if, you, if you listen and you don't have a game to go to and you're not, or you're not sure about a game, if you're just a fan of football, show up to Gilmore Stadium Friday night. It, it is a special place. It is a special Friday night when Green County comes to town. And, uh, and Justin, I, I will put it up against – any rivalry in the state. I know there are some great ones on the coast, and, and, you know, last week you had Moss Point and Pascagoula, and this week you got Popperville and Stone, and down the road you got some other ones with Gulfport and Ocean Springs and Gulfport Biloxi, but I'll put this one up as far as a community, two communities, two close-knit communities that that are it's as good as it gets. Yeah, I mean, it's really special, but if you're coming, let me tell you this. You better get there early no because doubt. there's going to be a ton of people on each side. Uh, you know, with a matchup like this, as we said, both teams are coming off a hive hive out of week one. Uh, there's going to be people coming out in droves. Uh, who knows how many people is going to actually watch this game, but I know it'll be standing room only. So if you're coming and you're not from here, you better come and get you a seat early. No doubt. Well, Coach Ray, I appreciate it. Uh, best of luck, obviously. We're going to be there, and uh, I appreciate uh, joining us on the 228 podcast. Yeah, it's two for one tonight. That's like it. it. There I you like go. It. So uh, as far as the 228 Sports Podcast, we're going to take a quick break. We're also going to take a break on the Coach's Corner, but we still got a couple minutes left on that. Coming up on the podcast, Coach Ty Smith of the St. Martin Yellow Jackets is going to join us uh, as we wrap up uh, this episode this week, talk to the, the Yellow Jackets head coach about ending that uh, losing streak and their program moving forward as well. But uh, we'll be back with more here on the uh, Southern Six Sports Podcast brought to you by 228 Sports. And if you're tuning in on 106.9, FM. We'll be back to wrap up the Downtown Girl Coaches Corner in just a moment here on WRBE. Hey, all of you South Mississippi sports fans, are you ready for some high school prep sports this fall? Get in the game with the new 228 Sports app. Live scores, breaking news, players of the week, and so much more. Now available for iPhone and Android devices. Download the first dedicated high school sports app for South Mississippi today. Only from 228sports.com. And welcome back to the Southern Six Sports Podcast. 228 Sports, Bruce Thornton, Justin Estes. Appreciate Coach Ray talking to us a little bit about Battle for the Bell this Friday night. George County taking on Greene County and what may be a shootout at Gil Martin Stadium. But uh, we, as we wrap up uh, this week in this segment and we look back on week one of the college, uh, college, the high school football season, uh, no win was bigger than what the St. Martin Yellow Jackets did on Friday night as they defeated the Van Cleve Bulldogs 24-14. to And I've got the head coach of the Yellow Jackets, Coach Ty Smith, joining us by phone. Good evening, Coach. How are you today? Hey, good evening. Appreciate y'all having me. No problem, Coach. Uh, you guys uh, go to Van Cleve or at home uh, Friday night, take down Van Cleve and uh, end uh, the the 17-game uh, losing uh, winning losing streak. I'll get it right. I've called it different things uh, this whole show, getting it right. But uh, <laughs> but but for you guys, uh, this is now your third season at St. Martin. Is that correct? That's correct. And and so took over for Coach Whitehead, and uh, it's been a slow build for you guys. Uh, just just talk to me a little bit about what it's meant over the last uh, couple of years, and what you've been trying to do, and, and really the resilience of your kids and your program to get to this point and uh, to to see it pay off for this big win. Uh, you know, I tell you, um, before I came to St. Martin, you know, I had a bunch of really big games because they had they had so much talent come through there back, uh, you know, prior to 2020. Um, whenever I was coaching at Ocean Springs, we had some knockdown drag out ball games and, you know, it's always had some talent in and out of that place. And, um, you know, whenever the, it, it presented itself to, to, you know, go across the bridge and take that job, um, coach Whitehead, you know, he, he opened his arms, asked me to come over and be his OC. Uh, he had one year left. He retired. And I loved every second of working with coach Whitehead in his final year. And, um, you know, the position came available and, we hit the ground running and we had the, we knew it was going to be a revamp, you know, from admin all the way down. We knew that, you know, we needed to change things from the middle school level all the way up. Um, you know, and so we had, we had some guys, we had some guys there, but it was the, the numbers had dipped, you know, whenever I actually got the job, we were down to about 45, 47, somewhere in that range on the varsity football team. And, so the year one, the goal was let's get as many kids back out here at football that we can and um, do it the right way and discipline and structure and hard work. And 
obviously you're going to lose guys, you know, whenever they realize this isn't easy. Right. And, um, but we, we haven't changed. You know, I said from day one that our strength conditioning program would outdo everybody's, and that's what we've lived and breathed by. And we've we've had to build some young guys up, and now we're finally, you know, the fruit's finally there for us. We've got, we don't have a whole lot of depth, but we, you know, our first our first group of guys are some hardworking guys. Yeah, and for you guys, uh, you mentioned something there when you, when you step into a program and you kind of feel like, okay, we got to build a foundation here. A lot of times. I hear coaches with the same type of, of plan that what you had, and, and it takes some younger guys getting in the program and, and being willing to stick with the program through some, some tough times, but uh, they, they get in the weight room, they get physically stronger, they, they get into the program, they buy into the coaching staff and what you guys are trying to do, and, and then to finally see some success in week one now, I mean, right off the bat, I mean, that's huge for you guys moving forward. It is, you know, obviously last year, you know, everybody, everybody wanted that to go differently. And it's um, kind of like I told our kids all throughout the year, it's probably the best thing that's happened to us um, as a collective, because whenever you go through something like that as a unit, uh, and you and, and like, there was no quit in the coaches, there was no quit in the, in the players last year. Um, it was just a matter of, you know, we, we weren't very good. We were young. We were not mature enough to handle some situations that we needed to handle um and you know now yeah a year later uh, i beg to differ you know it's um <laughs> every, everybody's everybody's matured a little bit everybody's grown a little bit and uh, i mean it showed friday night i mean van Cleese is an incredible football program coach fan he, he does a great job one of the most physical you know they've got some of the right. most physical kids that are in high school football and it's you know, and I told him that you know, through and through. I mean, anytime you play them, you got to be prepared. And uh, our guys, you know, they never batted an eye. You know, they came out and first snap, and they hit them in the mouth, and they didn't quit the end of the game. And you know, offensively, moved the ball around up and down the field. Some made some plays with some young guys, and defensively, with a lot of returning starters, they they did what we expected of them. They made some big plays. Actually, had a scoop and score, um, had a safety. So that's, that's going to have to be our, our ammo this, this year. Obviously, we're going to play a little more ball control. We've got some athletes on offense, but they're young. So we're going we're gonna to bend but don't break offensively. And then defensively, we're going to try to get after some people. When you look at this and, and you, you talk about your roster, I mean, are, are you, you, you keep mentioning young guys in, in positions. I mean, are, is, there a, is there a core group of seniors? Uh, how many are you talking about here that, that have kind of gone through this? Uh, what, what guys are still there that are heading into this being their last year as far as numbers go? Yeah, I'll tell you, it's, uh, this, this shows just how young we were last year. Um, this year we have roughly five, six seniors this, okay. this playing on the nights. Um, you know, for a seven A football team, That's you know, tough. obviously you want that number. Yeah, you want that number to be about ten, twelve. You know, you wanted about six starters on defense and six on offense. But, um, you know, and it's, it's no disrespect to the seniors we have, but it's it just shows the talent that we have in our junior class and our sophomore class. And offensively, um, and we lined up the other night with um, with four underclassmen on the offensive line. Um, you know, had a sophomore center starting. We had a sophomore quarterback. We had a freshman at tailback. Uh, our number one leading receiver was a sophomore. Um, so uh, the future is very bright. It's just just keep working. Yeah, and when you look at it, uh, you mentioned your defense, uh, and, 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 it, and it may be a situation because I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Most of the time you hear the opposite defense bend but don't break, but you said your offense or your defense is usually the one you say that, but you said your offense. But is it a case where your defense, you just kind of want them to keep you in ball games and then make enough plays with this young offense to give yourself a chance? Is that kind of going to be the formula for St. Martin you know, moving forward? It's, it's- it is, and it's it's kind of on both sides. You know, you play any time, any defense, no matter how talented you are, you play somebody like Van Cleef, you got to be a big don't break because they're going to get three or four yards, you know, on first down runs, uh, you know, consistently. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they are. It's, well, we, that's just – so you've got you to push that into your kids' heads that, like, okay, keep it at that. Keep it at that three or four yards. And then on second down, if we can stop them for one yard, now we've got them in a third medium, and now we've got an opportunity to get them off the field. And that's what our guys did, um, you know. But yeah, offensively, it's 
you know, I say bend, but don't break. It's, it's more so what I, I guess what I'm trying to get across is having a sophomore quarterback and a freshman tailback right. and our, our, and our, our number one receiver right now is a sophomore. It's, we cannot shoot ourselves in the foot. Yeah. Don't turn the ball over. You know, field position is a good, good, good thing. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, we've seen teams like that. Uh, you know, you were talking about that. We, we, Justin and I did obviously the George County East Central game, and East Central wound up running close to 60 plays, and our offense had the ball for like 30 plays. I mean, it was one of those same deals. We saw exactly what you were talking about last Friday, and we played Van Cleef here in a couple of weeks, and, and we've seen Coach Fant's offense and his philosophy the last couple of years. And, and, and you mentioned that, and, and, and we've, you know, obviously done football for so long. They're, they're just those years where your offense, it, like you said, let's just play some field position. Don't, don't, put our, don't give our defense a short field to have to defend. And, and we'll, you know, we, you put yourself in the fourth quarter to try to win the ball game. And it sounds like that's what you did against Van Cleef. I said, a lot of times as coaches, we forget we're not, yeah, we are coaching against each other, but we're honestly trying to coach against a 17 year old. So <laughs> if we can get our 17 year olds to, to, uh, to just just do about 80 percent of what we're trying to get them to do there's a good opportunity to get a win so yeah and when you look at it uh, uh for you guys uh you know 7a schedule uh, you step up uh, this week i believe uh into the 7a ranks and uh, you head uh what uh, north uh, you got uh pedal this week is that right you'll see that yeah. in the schedule travel, travel to pedal yeah. travel to pedal they came off of you know amazing football game between them and hattiesburg on saturday night um uh, final was seven to three. Hattiesburg got them um, at home, and that's uh, two. I mean, it, both of them are going to be playoff caliber football teams. So we're really excited to go up. Um, you know, I'm, re- I'm really excited for our kids. I'm excited for myself. That's where actually where I started off coaching at uh, 19 years ago. So it's um, never got to coach a game in that stadium. We got it. We got it designed and built whenever Steve Buckley was there. Yep. I moved um, right prior to the season starting. So. Yeah, the kids are the kids are excited. You know, it's something different for them. Um, but at the end of the day, we got to line up. We got to play football, and um, you know, obviously, this school schedule's changing. We've been out of school the past two days, and we're out of school again tomorrow. So that's throwing us some obstacles. Um, but I tell you, the best Labor Day practice I've ever had um, in 20 years of coaching, and um, well, uh, the kids, the kids are. Uh, I think, Coach, that, uh, you know, you see an excitement because uh, as hard as they work and, and to see it pay off the way they do. And uh, you keep mentioning the, these names, and I'm like, uh, Eddie Wayne, uh, Coach Whitehead, and Buckley, you know, they all they all got a little swing through George County. A lot of people don't know that. But uh, Coach Whitehead started over here at uh, Loosedale Middle School, and Coach Buckley was uh, the athletic director and uh, head coach here at George County, 96. Uh, 95, 96 yeah. in that time. So uh, very familiar with both of those guys, known them for a long time, and uh, coached against Coach Whitehead when he was baseball coach at the Iberville. But uh, um, when you look at, at your schedule, I mean, what uh, you still got uh, your your non district schedule coming up. Uh, you know, we talk, we've talked about that. Justin and I talk about that, and uh, with all the coaches about this shift where you play more non district games and you do district games. But does that give a team, a young team, a team trying to learn how to win like what you guys have, a chance to really grow before you jump into a Diaberville matchup or an Ocean Springs matchup, go, uh, you know, in region play? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's you got to be careful whenever you're scheduled. And obviously every coach, you know, they, they say they want to play the best, to beat the best and prepare for the playoffs. And, you know, but you've got to judge where your program is. you got to judge your depth. You have to, you know, and – Every head coach at any level, they know what's coming. They know what their middle school program looks like. Um, you know, so this is kind of this is the exact path that I thought we would be on, um, on where we are right now. And that's the reason I love having Van Cleve, a physical football team. I love having Pedal, which is a playoff 7A football program. You know, I love having uh, Hancock. It's one of your more physical, you know, playoff 6A teams. You know, they're going to line up and they're going to hit you in the mouth. And then obviously you have Stone County, who's very well coached. You got very good defense. Hung in there with Biloxi last week, um, and then we finish off with East Central, who, you know, every single year that's what they've been known for. They're going to run oh, the this, coach. I'll go ahead and give you a quick scouting report. They're going to run the football a lot, <laughs> a lot. I, I can go ahead and tell that's you what, that. that's what the word. Is. That's what the word is. They're, yeah, they're going to run the football well, a I, lot. We're going to be definitely be a bend, but don't break defense. Uh, but. 
But I yeah. do like to – I mean, I, I, I hear that schedule and I'm like, okay, those are some games that that are going to be – available for you i'm not saying there uh, i'm not saying there's any games where like oh man y'all you guys are just going to roll but i do see games where you're going to find yourself uh, in the fourth quarter of most of these games with an opportunity to uh, to be successful and and for a team that's you know that struggled to find those wins the last uh, you know year and a half or so uh, i think that's a promising uh, situation where you know you get a couple of more i mean i know you want to win all of them going to pedal is going to be a really difficult task for any team but you look down the road and you're like, okay, I mean, we get out of this three or four wins heading into district. That's that's a big, that's a big deal for you guys. And uh, it's, it's breaking down your season, and uh, it's kind of my personal goals. You know, obviously, I've got multiple goals for us as a program, as a team, and you have to you have to adapt that every year. But I'd say for this season, you know, obviously, you know, I think we can win every game uh, in our in our preseason schedule. Yeah. Uh, I really do. Uh, you know, wouldn't say otherwise, and wouldn't believe you know, but otherwise. But a good, a good, a good preseason. If we, if we can find, if we can get out of preseason, and you have a winning schedule, you know, if you're if you're three and two, and then you get to district, you're three and two. You yeah. have a, you're winning, you know, then you're you're in the playoffs, and no that's doubt. the ultimate goal because yep. it can happen. So, but when you um, when you look that's at that's kind of that's kind of what our mindset is. That's like right now, we've got three or four starters that were out last week. You know, two or three of them probably could have dressed out and got reps, but we know what our goal is. You know, it's it's yeah, we want to beat Van Cleve, but at the same time, we've got to get these kids for the long haul. And it, you know, we're still in the same position this week, so yeah. And and I think that's the key. And when you look at it, uh, you know, region wise, um, I talked to Jeremy Forehand last week, Gabriel, an impressive win on the road. Um, you got Harrison Central that lost a uh, close game to Gaucher. And then you've got, uh, you know, Ocean Springs and, and Gulfport sitting there. And, uh, you know, you're very familiar, obviously, with Ocean Springs. And, and they've kind of been the top two teams in this in this region. And then you've got a new coach in Biloxi with Coach Dubose coming in. But, you know, I've said this all along, Coach. I, I think Gulfport and Ocean Springs have earned the right to say, okay, they're probably a playoff team. Uh, you know, that's what they've been for – forever uh, and then all of a sudden you got two playoff spots open and uh, can you guys get in the mix of it and uh, compete with those uh, other teams to battle it out for those two spots absolutely you know that's that's kind of you know you hit the nail on the head yeah Gulfport and Ocean Springs I mean that everybody knows on the coast that's the two top, top dogs in 7A uh, has been for a long time you know we were actually talking about that the other day at practices you know I'm, I'm so excited for us to get to the point at St. Martin where we get our preseason schedule and we look at our schedule and it's like, okay, yep. Looking at this, we're going to finish seven and three with a possibility of going, you know, either 10 and over eight and two or nine and one. Then you kind of know that before the season starts, um, you know, the, the many years at ocean Springs, that's, that's kind of what no we doubt. thought. That's what yeah. we called the schedule. We knew, okay, this is worst case scenario, but let's, let's try to build off of that and do better. And, um, I think we're getting to that point at St. Martin, you know, especially building next year's schedule and having having this youth come up and have another year with them and our middle school kids up there next year uh, have a really good eighth grade group. I think next year we will be able to look at our preseason schedule and say, okay, yeah, this is kind of what we expect. Yeah. Um, but it's, 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 a learn, it's a learned mentality. And that's one thing with kids today. It's, uh, you know, Kids suffer from a lot of self-doubt, and that's one thing we've really, really, really had to push our kids with is, I mean, they have to believe in themselves. They have to believe in each other. as Otherwise, it's all for nothing. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, you know, Justin just sitting here nodding his head. He, he knows we talk about this stuff every week. But uh, the other thing, and, I, and Justin, I want you to get in here on this real quick, um, is the fact that in this world that we live in today of coaches – the fact that this administration has stuck with this staff, Justin, you don't see that in today's world anymore as much. Yeah. No. You know, it gives you an opportunity to continue to build on something. And, you know, just like in the last segment, we talked with Coach Ray at George County, and he's had a couple of seasons to be able to build some of these young guys up. And, you know, you finally get to a point in this year where you do have some expectations. And I see St. Martin kind of being in that – in that similar boat, it takes you a couple years to play some of those younger guys and continue to let those guys uh, just progress and get better, and then you finally have a group that you can play with and win with. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, and that was, I mean, I, I, I'd lie to you if I wasn't honest with you on this, man. It's, it's whenever they, whenever we sat down and talked, every one of the admin, they knew that we were just to go through a rebuild. Yeah. They knew, you know, and they know how competitive I am. They know how bad I want to win. And they warned me after they offered me the job. They said, understand, it's going to take a little while. Like it's not, you know, it's not going to line up and, and win right away. And, and I knew that. Yeah. And I told him, I said, I said, it's nothing more fulfilling, though, than, you know, how easy would it be to take over a seven and three program that's been seven and three forever and <laughs> you win eight or nine games? You know, I mean, right. like, honestly. Yeah. It's, but you know, I, I just so, know, you know, speaking from experience in the, in the world that we live in, I mean, they can go in with those expectations, but then the community starts grumbling and certain people get in. Correct. And the fact, and, and I give them a tremendous amount of credit, Coach, that the fact that they that they knew what they they were real honest with you straight up. You knew what you were getting into, and now they've given you a chance to to build this thing. And uh, you know, you see the first of what could be many more successful Friday nights uh, last week, and. Uh, I, like I said, I just have done this long enough to know that uh, not everybody gets that opportunity. And uh, and and I say kudos to, to the administration down there for giving you that opportunity. And uh, I just hope that it continue. You know, I think it's going to continue to pay off for them. I think it will too, man. We've got. I mean, our coaching staff right now. We've got an incredible group of coaches, um, middle school as well. You know, bringing in defense coordinator uh, Woody Cagnoletti. I mean, he's done an incredible job. Um, and uh, getting Coach Lala, Tim Lala, over from Stanislaus this year, taking over the offense. Um, you know, that's that's it's been huge for me. You know, that's one thing I had to, I had to do a lot of self evaluating after last year, and um, you know, me specifically trying to be the head coach, trying to call special teams, trying to be the offensive coordinator at a 7A program, and teaching, you know, till noon every day in the classroom is way too much. Um, just to put it nicely. And that's, that's one reason <laughs> I had to do some self evaluating and say, okay, what do I, what can I do differently to help change this? And I, you know, you got to surround yourself with good coaches. That's mm -hmm. just a bust. No doubt. And uh, coach, it sounds like you guys have got a good staff. You put together one that you've been able to uh, be confident in and the kids have bought into you guys. And uh, man, we just wish you the best of luck. I know uh, we saw you guys a couple weeks ago in the uh, Jamboree and uh, Coach Ray uh, had some, some, some great words for, for you guys and the way that y'all played. And uh, I think it paid off uh, last Friday night and uh, wish you the best of luck uh, this week uh, heading to pedal and uh, moving forward. I appreciate y'all reaching out and I love what y'all do. So if y'all ever need anything from us down here in St. Martin, you let me know and um, we'll be pulling for y'all. I appreciate it, coach. Thank you so much and best of luck. That okay, is, same uh, to you. That is Thanks. coach uh, Ty Smith of the St. Martin Yellow Jackets and uh, wish them the best of luck uh, on Friday night as they head up to pedal. And uh, Justin, uh, just uh, uh, one of the, one of the growing, hopefully building programs in South Mississippi. Uh, tough road, though, in uh, in 7A. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of excitement with that program after getting that uh, first win and 18 tries uh, on Friday night. And this week will be a good uh, measuring stick of how you measure up with one of the programs in your classification, 7A, and one that's uh, expected to be a playoff team in the uh, Region 3, 7A in Pedal. Yep. So uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to kind of – each week, see how each week goes, and uh, hopefully can talk to uh, some coaches ahead of these, especially with this non-region, because you kind of got to see how the schedule falls and who might come up with a big win or, or, or an upset, something like that. So, And then when we get into region play, you can kind of narrow it down to some big matchups there. But, uh, man, I'm looking forward to it. Glad uh, you can join me and, uh, and help me run through this every week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Like we said, uh, we're, it's not new for us to be working together covering sports and uh, especially George County, but we get to broaden our horizon and, uh, you know, cover all the uh, teams here in the coastal six counties. There you go. So get out Friday night and support uh, support a local team, man. Uh, you get nothing like Friday night football, and there's some big matchups across the uh, southern six. So get out there and support them. But I appreciate you tuning in this week to the Southern Six uh, Sports Podcast, brought to you by 228 Sports as we wrap up episode six already of season three. And uh, we just appreciate you tuning in. For Justin Estes, Coach Bruce Thorne, we will see you next week.
listening to the Southern Six Sports Podcast with Bruce Thornton. Stay in the game with 228sports.com. The Southern Six Sports Podcast is produced weekly by 228sports.com. All content and interviews are copyright of 228sports, LLC. Contact us on the web for more information.